Hi, we're out on our range today. And once again, no, you haven't won a prize. That's a scam. Now, what we're talking about today is interchangeability of different calibers in 38 Special and 357 Magnum revolvers. And I have to preface this with a few things, so bear with me if I'm telling you things you already know. If you have a 38 Special and a 357 Magnum revolver, the ammunitions are similar to each other. They're the same diameters, but 357 Magnum is longer. So if you try to put 357 Magnum ammunition into a 38 Special revolver, it won't fit because it's too long. There are some exceptions. They're rare, but every once in a while you'll find a revolver marked 38 Special that will chamber 357 Magnum ammunition. If you have one of those, I'm going to recommend that you do not fire 357 ammunition out of it. The chamber pressure of 357 Magnum is a lot higher than 38 Special. Okay, but if you have a 357 Magnum revolver, you'll find that if you try to put 38 Special ammunition in it, it drops in there, it's just fine, you can shoot it, and you're perfectly safe, and it will work. If there's any exceptions to that, they're beyond rare. Now, when we talk about this, the term that comes up is one-way interchangeability. You can put the short cartridge into the long cartridge revolver, but you can't put the long cartridge into the short cartridge revolver. Okay, and when we have this discussion, it always brings up a discussion and debate about what other calibers will or won't chamber in 38 Special and 357 Magnum revolvers. And there's a lot of calibers out there that people talk about, but primarily there's four. 38 Long Colt, 38 Short Colt, 38 Smith & Wesson, and 38 Super Automatic. Now for 38 Super Automatic, we have a long, tedious presentation on the subject of will it or will it not chamber in 38 Special or 357 Magnum revolvers. The short version is, depending on your firearm and ammunition choices, sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. Even when it will chamber in a 357 Magnum, again, depending on your firearm and ammunition choices, your rim thickness might not be quite right, and sometimes it won't fire reliably. If I'm going to make a recommendation, it would be if you find that 38 Super ammunition will fit in your 38 Special revolver, don't fire it. 38 Super is a lot more powerful than 38 Special. Okay, that having been said, what about the other calibers? Well, 38 Long Colt and 38 Short Colt are a subject for another time, mainly because I couldn't find any ammunition in those calibers for today's presentation. So if I find some, we'll do another long, tedious presentation on that. But for today, I want to talk about 38 Smith & Wesson. And let's start with a close-up of what the ammunition looks like. On your left is 38 Special, and on your right is 38 Smith & Wesson. You can see that they're similar, but the 38 Special is significantly longer. Now I have to discuss a little bit of history of the cartridge, and remember, sources don't always agree with each other. But according to the sources I've read, 38 Smith & Wesson was introduced in 1877. 38 Special, depending on which source you read, 1899 to 1902. I think 1902 is the more accurate of those two numbers. And it's a common misconception to think that 38 Special is the later, longer version of 38 Smith & Wesson. And that's not actually correct. 38 Special has a projectile diameter of 357. 357 Magnum, introduced in 1935, has a projectile diameter of 357. 38 Smith & Wesson actually has a greater diameter. Depending on which source you read, it's 358 or 359. So maybe one thousandth of an inch greater in diameter. One thousandth of an inch is roughly one twenty-five hundredth of a centimeter. We're talking about a very small amount. But is it enough to make it enough greater in circumference that it won't fit into your 38 Special or 357 Magnum revolvers? Well, the test guns I have are Smith & Wesson Model 36 38 Special, Smith & Wesson Model 638 38 Special, Smith & Wesson Model 15 38 Special, Ruger SP-101 357 Magnum, Ruger Security 6 357 Magnum, Ruger Blackhawk 357 Magnum, Smith & Wesson 686 6 357 Magnum, and a Dan Wesson 357 Magnum. When I've showed this display of revolvers before, someone asked the question, why no Colts? Well, I own several firearms manufactured by Colt. I just don't happen to own a Colt in 38 Special or 357 Magnum. So I'm using these handguns because 
This represents the entirety of every 38 Special or 357 Magnum revolver that I own. Okay, now when it comes to ammunition, different manufacturers will manufacture their ammunition to very slightly different tolerances and sizes and, and manufacturing standards. So we don't want to hang our hats on the results of just one type of ammo. So I brought two because these were the only two I could find. Winchester Super X, 38 Smith & Wesson, 145 grain round nose lead projectile. Remington Green and Yellow Box Wheel Gun, 38 Smith & Wesson, 146 grain round nose lead projectile. Okay, so let's see if these will fit into our revolvers. And because we're talking about such a minute difference, that I'm going to use two cartridges because there may just be enough difference between one chamber in the next and one cartridge in the next that sometimes one might fit while the other doesn't. And what we see is that it certainly does not fit. Does not fit. Model 15 does not fit. But if you look at that, you'll see one fits a little more than the other because the difference is so minute that from one chamber to the next, the difference might not be perfect. Now, interesting, with our Ruger SP-101, not only do they not fit, but they don't go as far in as if these chambers are actually tighter. So is that a SP-101 thing? Is that particular to that individual gun? Is that a Ruger thing? Is that a 357 thing? And it would appear, no, it's just that gun because in the Security 6, they don't fit, but they go in the chamber quite a bit more. So see, there's just minute differences from one gun to the next. In our Blackhawk, yeah, again, they do not fit. But they fit a little more than they did in the SP-101. Now, for the 686-6, yeah, do not fit. And the Dan Wesson. Hmm, they don't fit, and again, they go in even less, suggesting that the Dan Wesson has tighter chambers than the other revolvers. But again, is that particular to this gun or Dan Wessons in general? Unless I had a few more Dan Wessons, I really couldn't answer that. So, does 38 Smith & Wesson fit into your 38 Special or 357 Magnum revolver? It would appear that the great majority of the time, at least, the answer is going to be no. But before we hang our hats on that, let's try our Remington ammunition. And in our Model 15, it fits. Not only does it fit, but it drops right in there as if it's made for it. Model 638 drops right in there as if it's made for it. Model 15 drops right in there as if it's made for it. Okay, well let's try our SP-101. That does not drop right in there. And depending on which chamber I put it in, yeah, some chambers are a little tighter than others, but that absolutely goes in there. That would absolutely work. It's kind of snug. It's going to require one sharp slap or maybe two to get it out of there, which somehow I managed not to poke a hole in my hand doing that. So that would work, but definitely you can tell it's not made for it and it would work in a pinch but with the Ruger Blackhawk drop right in there as if they're made for it the Smith & Wesson 686 drops right in there and the Dan Wesson yeah that does not fit I suppose if I whacked it with a mallet, I might make it fit. But interesting thing that it will fit better in some chambers than others. The difference is so minute. So I would suggest that if you had a different Dan Wesson revolver, 
you might get a different result. Okay, so question. Does 38 Smith & Wesson ammunition fit into your 38 Special or 357 Magnum revolver? And the answer is just what we thought it would be. The answer is yes or no, depending on your firearm and ammunition choices. Now that brings us to something you saw in the title of this presentation, the weak principle. Okay, I wrote these down because I wanted to make sure I got them right. Recently we did a presentation where I was talking about my top five guns for Tiatwaki, and I mentioned that some people, I'm not one of them, some people think that in a post-apocalyptic survival scenario, having a 357 Magnum revolver will be a good idea because it can chamber all of these different ammunitions that you might fire. And what I actually said was, people think it's a good idea because, quote, they perceive of Sorry, what they perceive is this versatility of ammunition when it comes to all this ammo you're going to forage. Now, did you catch that? They perceive. I happen to know that sometimes 38 Smith & Wesson will fit and sometimes it won't. And unless you've tried it with your individual revolver, you don't really know if it will fit or not. I also said there's some debate over just which other types of 38s will fit into your 357 cylinder. Now there was someone who called himself Randall Weeks, that's his online handle, who took exception to what I said and evidently he misunderstood me and thought that I was saying you could put 38 Smith & Wesson into a 357 Magnum revolver. And I know you can sometimes but it's not something you can count on. I didn't make that point quite clear enough. And what he wrote was, you're not gonna get 38 Smith & Wesson to go into a 38 Special 357. We've tried that on a lot of revolver models. It's not even close. Well, I've now tried it on several revolver models, and I found that depending on which ammunition you choose, it will fit or it won't fit. And sometimes it'll fit, but it's close. So, when he says that he's tried it on several revolver models, I'm not going to say, no fella, you didn't, but I am going to say that if you did any kind of testing, your testing was faulty or at best incomplete. Because we can see that depending on your firearm and ammunition choices, sometimes it absolutely will, and of course sometimes it won't. And this brings me to the weak principle of it shows us that blanket statements are rarely appropriate in the world of firearms. And terms like always and never are rarely appropriate in the world of firearms. And it puts me in the position where, believe me, I don't get any catharsis from this. It puts me in the position of having to request that if you're going to disagree with me, please disagree with something I actually said. And before you presume to tell me that I'm wrong, please put at least minimal effort into knowing what you're talking about. Now that having been said, I'm also going to request that for those of you who like presentations like this, please don't try to out troll each other and say something like, oh yeah, Paul, I bet your seven millimeter rem mag won't kill one of the neighbor's cows. And trying to put me in a position where I say, oh yeah, hold my pop tart. <sighs> but the real bottom line here is that if you're counting on your revolver being able to chamber all of these different rounds, you have to test your revolver with whatever ammunition you might happen to have because just because I can show you that my Dan Wesson doesn't work doesn't mean that yours won't. Just because my Model 36 does work, not necessarily indicative that yours will as well. Okay, we've about beat this to death. So, as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Will 38 Smith & Wesson Chamber in a 38 Special or 357 Magnum Revolver video. Now let's do a supplemental portion to today's presentation because I know it's going to come up.
How does 38 Smith & Wesson compare in terms of power to 38 Special? Well, to make the comparison as fair as I can, for both calibers I'm going to use Remington Green and Yellow Box wheel gun ammunition. For 38 Smith & Wesson, that's 146 grain round nose lead. For 38 Special, 158 grain round nose lead. And the test gun I'm going to use is my Smith & Wesson Model 15 38 Special with a 4-inch barrel. Let's go to the chronograph. I have the chronograph set up at 7 yards, and we'll start with the 38 Smith & Wesson. Six hundred and sixty-six. Six sixty-five. Six forty-one. Six seventy-nine. Six sixty-three. And six fifty-five. Let's see how that compares to the 38 Special. And now the 38 Special. 760. 761. 777. 788. 759 and 767. Now let's crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and it comes with the normal caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like ambient temperature and elevation can affect chronograph results. And the results I got were with the 38 Smith & Wesson, a mean velocity of 661 feet per second. With the 38 Special, 768. That's 107 feet per second more. That's a lot more. And when you consider how low these velocities are, adding 107 feet per second more becomes that much more significant. And remember, it achieved that greater velocity with a heavier projectile. So 38 Special, a lot more powerful than 38 Smith & Wesson. But remember, I use these two types of ammunitions to make a fair comparison. There's a big difference between fair and realistic. If there is anyone making any kind of performance 38 Smith & Wesson ammunition, I'm not aware of it. If anybody has seen some, please post a link. If you go to the store and you find 38 Smith & Wesson ammunition, it is almost certainly going to be round nose lead, low pressure ammunition. But 38 Special can be had with various different types of hollow points, FTX projectiles and so on, plus P configurations. So if you were to look at what type of ammunition someone is likely to have in their 38 Special versus what they're likely to have in their 38 Smith & Wesson, 38 Special is going to be a lot more powerful and a lot more effective, and we can take that as axiomatic.